I want to uh, remove it. So I'm going to edit, remove and redo. So I'm going to uh, remove it there. So there we have it. Then let's go back into, my, let's see if that takes it out of the reconciled items, accounting dropdown, bank reconciliation. And I'm going to go back into the manage transactions. I'm going to look for that transaction in the reconcile item again. And I believe we brought it back here on the 1017. So I'm going to record it again, adding the details. And so I'm going to say that this is going to be primary da, 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 item. So now I'm going to add the item and it's now going to the inventory asset account that has been set up when I, when I told it to set up on a perpetual inventory. So we have two inventory asset accounts. Let's record it again, saving the transaction and save the transaction and then see if we can match it. It wants something in the tax rate field. So I'm going to say, all right, zero, save it. And then we will match it. Okay, so that should record it again over here. So if I go back to my balance sheet uh, and my income balance sheet, I, I've messed up my balance sheet. I'm going to go drop down, go into my balance sheet. And we have updated it in here for 2022. Okay. And then, so now we have this separate account for the inventory asset, to just tracking that $30. If I tab to the right on the income statement, we're updated here. If I tab to the right again, this is now my inventory tracking. And now, I've, now I have the one inventory account of the $30, which is tying out to the balance sheet account of $30, because this is the one we're tracking perpetually. Now I'm going to delete the accounts receivable and re-record that to show us the sale of that item. So I'm going to go into that one and go into customer one. And I'm going to uh, just see if I can delete this one. We will uh, edit it. Let's see if I can just edit it maybe and see if I can change it to inventory one and see if that updates it. So it is recommended to add the original content details. Let's see if that will just simply update it so it'll track the sale of the inventory. And then I'm going to go back to the accounting dropdown and the income statement. And let's see if I can bring this back to 2022 and 2022 and update so there's the 500 but no it's not going to update it's not going to update over here to here so i'd have to delete or void it ah all right let's go into it again go into it here and see i'm going to void it okay make another one invoice and then this will be customer one, customer one sometime in uh, 2022, the end of 2022, we sold this item, which will bring the units of item back down to zero. All right, let's approve it again. The due date field needs to be in play. All right, all right for crying out loud. Okay. So then when we sell it, if I go back to the income statement, we now have the $500, but we have $60 in the cost of goods sold. That's what I was trying to get to because now it reduced with that sales item, the inventory account back down and recorded the other $30 here on the balance sheet. If I can open the balance sheet again, sorry about the mess of an issue I put together without checking that off, but we will get there. So we're going to say the balance sheet now has uh, the inventory account, you know, went back down to zero for that $30. And then if I look at my account over here, now the 
perpetual inventory account has gone back down to zero. Okay, let's take a quick look at the trial balance, accounting dropdown, and reports. Opening up the trial balance, type in, in trial balance to do so. And just, you could just see how the, the balance sheet and the income statement are piled on top of each other uh, in the trial balance. 